Hi, welcome to Dom Digs In. I'm Dawn. I like to talk about living a happy, healthier life and things that I'm doing in my life that you might find interesting or get value from. For those that are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. And those that have been with me for a while, this is what I've been doing in my little hiatus. I took a little bit of a break because I was feeling a little burnt out. Just I had really high expectations for myself and it was just kind of time to take a step back. So I want to tell you what I've been doing in the last couple of weeks and how it has really helped me and how I think I'm going to be on track for September to get going on my Hamlin rotation. The first thing that I did, and it was big, it was really big, but it was upsetting my life a lot. I got rid of the watch. I know. We live in a day of technology where everybody has a watch, a Fitbit, a phone, something that's keeping track of their calories and their heart rate and how much cardio they're doing and how many steps they're doing. And I am just finding that this is making me crazy. Crazy. I know how much I have to work. I know when my heart rate is up. I know how long I've been walking, standing, doing things. This is a liar. They lie. I'm sorry. I've had three Fitbits and this is another brand. And none of them have been accurate. And maybe it's me. I don't honestly know how they work with your body, but I either bust them. The Fitbits, I break them off at the strap tops. It's not even I can replace the straps on them because they're busted inside. And I broke three of them. And then I end up carrying it around in my pocket. And then I end up washing it. So that's not working for me. My husband bought me an Apple Watch. Oh my goodness. I made him take it back because that is way too big of an expense for how I... I've never had a watch I haven't broken. I smash them into, I, I just, I'm really rough on them. I don't understand, but I, they just don't work for me. So I knew that this was not accurate. I could be with somebody that had 10,000 steps. We'd been together all day and I was showing 3,000 steps. So I never believed that this was giving me an honest, accurate account of what my steps were. So I've just decided that I don't need the technology to know what I'm doing. I don't need to know how many calories did I burn? What zone was I in? I know what zone I'm in. I know when I'm reaching my potential. I know when I'm tired. I know when I've worked too much. I know when I haven't worked enough. So I'm going back to the basics of how we did it many years ago before all this technology came along. So I thought I am spending way too much time focusing on this watch. And I was because I was really trying to get my steps in every day. I wanted my 10,000 steps and I'd be doing them and I'd be panicking. Oh, I'm only at 3,000. Oh, I'm only at 5,000. Oh my God, it's eight o'clock at night. I've got to go do another 5,000 steps before I can go to bed tonight. And it was honestly keeping me up. I was getting ready for bed, brushing my teeth while doing steps. My husband came upstairs and said, what are you doing? You're going to bed. But I, I don't have my steps. So I had to let that go. Like that was really a crazy thing. Like. I know when I'm working hard, I know when I'm getting my steps, and I know when I'm not meeting what I need to meet for my physical needs. So I just have to say goodbye to this and let it go because I can still wear it as a watch, I can look at it once in a while, but this is not gonna be my be all end all for registering my calories, my heart rate, all those other things. I just, I'm going back to basics. I know when I worked out, we got through a lot of years without owning one of these, and I just had to let it go. Another thing that I started doing is I'm an intermittent faster and I've been fasting for quite a few years now. And I'm kind of finding that I've got into a fasting rut. Again, part of the whole reset that I needed to do. So I've started having a protein shake for breakfast. Now I usually broke my fast with a fat, not with protein. So I just decided that I'm gonna break my fast with protein. I have some old shakes. Now, I'm sure everybody has old shakes lying around that they either didn't like the taste of or whatever, it wasn't working for them. So I was down at my daughter's the other week and she had bought some protein shakes that she just didn't like. One was a snickerdoodle and it's so sweet, it's like ridiculous. Well, I had an old Isogenics chocolate shake that I love. I love Isogenics, I used to sell Isogenics. I used to have them at the gym, great product. So I had this old jug and I'm like, well, maybe I'll just start using it. So I took a scoop of the old Isogenics. Now they're not outdated. It's just, I've had it for a while. I took a scoop of the Isogenics and a scoop of the Snickerdoodle and I mixed them together. It's still a little bit sweet, but it's definitely tolerable. It's kind of like a chocolatey cinnamon roll. And I've been having that in the morning. So now I know I'm starting off my day with 30 grams of protein. Hamlin did recommend that I get 70 to 75 grams a day. And I've been really struggling to get that. So I'm hoping that will help me with my lean muscle by getting that extra amount of protein in. I also make my shakes like a frosty. Now, if you don't know what a frosty is, I take ice, I crush it up. So my shake calls for one cup of water. 
So I fill up my measuring cup with one cup of crushed ice, then I pour water into all the holes. So it's one cup ice and water combined. Then I throw that in my magic bullet and then I whip it until it's thick like ice cream and I eat it. I'm not good at drinking shakes, I need to eat my food. So then I eat it and it just tastes like ice cream. Something to try if you really don't like drinking your shakes and you're looking for a little bit of a change, it's really great in the summer. So that's been really helping me, breaking my fast with protein, giving me a little more energy maybe, but I'm gonna keep doing that until I run out of protein powder. And then I will see how the changes affected me. Did I notice a difference? Has it really been? It's only been, um, I'm gonna say 10 days that I've been doing this. So I am feeling, strange how you get feelings, right? I am feeling stronger. I am feeling a little more energetic. I feel like I'm not as bloated, not as puffy. All these things that I was feeling before I took this little bit of break, I just was feeling fat and puffy and, and for honestly, no real reason. So this has really helped. So getting in the more protein during the day, doing the shake in the morning, something that I've been doing for me and it's helping. I have also added two new workouts into my rotation just to see what I honestly think of them. One is Eccentrics. I found it on YouTube. It is all about stretching and movement and waking up your hips and your legs and your arms. And it's simple stretching, just movement. And I found it really enjoyable. I did an over 60s class today and it was not difficult in any way, but you really, you know, you were stretching your toes and stretching your leg and every part of your body was getting a really good stretch and a good workout. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna throw that in during the week. I also started doing a yoga class. This is from someone who's calming down. So just so you're aware. I have a friend that has just finished a trauma for yoga course and is getting certified. And she's doing a little yoga class on the side just to get used to doing a class. So this has been great for me because I've been able to say to her, okay, I don't do yoga. This is why I don't do yoga. My brain doesn't free up. I spoke to Hamlin about this in my consultation because he asked me all the workouts that I've done over the years. And I'm like, I keep trying yoga and he goes, stop it. You're not a yoga person. Okay, I accepted that. But she really asked me to support her in this cause. So of course I am. And it has been really good. I went to the first class and I had a really hard time staying focused. You know, it was too quiet. I'm not good with quiet. So the second class, she brought some music and she talked to us a lot more, which really helped me. We were holding poses for a long time and I was like counting the time, right? In our brains, we know how long two minutes is. And I'm like, this is way more than two minutes. And I just couldn't seem to stay in that state of mind. So she started talking us through them a lot more. And okay, we're holding this for this amount of time. And you're at this far so far. And I found that really helpful as well as giving me a little more direction. Drop your shoulders. What should I be doing? What should I be concentrating on? You know, make my mind stop thinking about crazy things and think about my body and what I'm doing for it. And that has been helpful. Now, how long this will go on for me? I'm not too sure, but I am going to support her as long as she wants to offer this class for us. And it's just a little bit something different. The yoga gives me some extra stretching. And after the first class, I'm sore. Holding those poses for that long time, I really found that my hips were sore and it just took me a couple days to kind of get them like, okay, I must need this. So that was another thing that I started doing. So it's the eccentric workouts along with the yoga class. And I am also doing my Hamlin workouts. Now I am really picking and choosing. I've done a couple of the deeps. I'm doing the armatics. I'm doing the thymatics. I've done the HDM4. I'm doing a couple different ones. I am not following it as he has it laid out as yet. I'm going to leave that till the fall. Right now, I'm just picking and choosing and getting comfortable with all the different workouts that I haven't done before. So I just wanna get comfortable with them because I really got overwhelmed when I started doing it on the first week and it's, you know, six different workouts and it was just like, oh my gosh, and they were so different and it, my body just wasn't happy. So I thought, I'm just gonna pick and choose my way through all of the workouts. And I'll have that done by the fall. And then I'll be comfortable going into them and knowing what the expectations are and what I should be doing. Because those sliders were killing me. I can honestly say I just, I dreaded them. And I still dread them. And I am ignoring them. So I'll get to them. But right now, they're just not an important part of what I'm doing. No sliders. I find when I get frustrated enough with myself, I make changes. And the changes usually come in the form of a workout. I'm going, moving from one workout to another workout to another workout. And it just really helps me. I don't 
like to do a lot of different things. Like I was really okay when I did Tracy and I did the same workout for 10 days. I liked that because I liked getting better at the workout all the time. I really am not sure that I like doing a different workout every day. It just, but you know, we'll see. I will do it in the fall. I will do it when I start doing the rotation. But right now I'm kind of playing around with a lot of different things and I'm just going at my own pace and doing what my body wants to do. If it doesn't want to work out today, we're not going to work out today. And I'm feeling good about that. I'm feeling less puffy, less bloated. I really think the protein is helping. I'm not hungry during the day. So that is keeping me not eating until dinner time and maybe making better choices. I've always been pretty good with my food choices, but I do find that since I have the shake, I'm going, okay, well, that's a lot of protein. I've had 30 grams of protein. So I don't really need cheese and crackers or I don't need anything else until dinner time. So it's letting me stop having a meal, stop, and then go to my dinner. So I'm liking that. And that's making me feel better about myself and feeling less bloated, less puffy, and feeling that, you know, I'm fitting back into things a lot better. If you are also finding yourself in a little bit of a workout rut, or you're feeling a little bit run down, or you just need a little bit of a break, try throwing in some different workouts. Try doing something different. Maybe try a yoga class. Try doing something good for you. This week, I have a great week. I had my yoga class. On Thursday, I am going to see Melissa Etheridge. I'm going to meet up with a friend that I haven't seen since the pandemic. So we're super excited. We have a hotel for the night. And we're really excited to go and see her. And then on Friday, I'm going to visit one of my best friends who has just come back from Scotland. And I'm going to visit her overnight. And Saturday, I am going to a Chiari malformation walk for my daughter. So this is going to be really exciting. The boys are coming with us and then I'm going to bring the boys back here for a couple days and we can have some fun with them because how much more time are they going to want to spend with grandma and grandpa? Like, I'm hoping that we're the cool grandparents that they want to hang out with. So I'm going to take advantage of this week and spend a couple days with them and hopefully we'll go see the Mission Impossible movie or go to the zoo or just do a couple fun things around town. So I hope this week that you have some great workouts. I hope you're getting back on track if you were faltering a little bit too and feeling a little bit like I was like things just weren't coming together for you at the time so you need to take a little bit of a step back and remember what life is all about life is short and we need to stop spending so much time worrying about things that are honestly just not that important like the watch okay the watch is not an important part of my life living my life is an important part of my life so until I see you next week I hope you have some awesome workouts you are amazing High five.